Hello everyone. So we are back with Kate Forbes in South Africa and I'm Dan Winter, as you know, and we're here to talk about some more advanced Therify techniques with Kate's wonderful experience. She was having a, a conference call with her group there in South Africa yesterday and I realized some things were emerging that would be quite useful to share. So the title of this series will be Therify Techniques. We'll be talking about the, the science of collapse, perfected implosion, collapse, charge collapse, and the psychology of that behind Therify. And then we'll talk about a little bit about uh, breathing techniques to get through stress using Therify. Um, Kate will use the example of some young people, I think. And then finally, we may go into a little bit about uh, new techniques for remote healing with Therify using a surrogate and things like that. So Therify Techniques with Kate Forbes. Thanks for coming, Kate. Thank you very much, Dan. It's wonderful to be here. I'm very excited to share this. So yesterday you were telling about um, how you called it, you know, succeeding to sort uh, difficult emotions or pain as a process of collapse. Do you want to say more about that? So Dan, I've been working and not understanding the physics behind it, and it's wonderful to connect with you um, to understand that there's actually a very scientific component to what we're doing. But wherever there is a trapped energy, a store of energy, all energy is always seeking zero point. It's always seeking its state of rest. So if it's trapped, it's going to be up to mischief. By the time it manifests in your body, it's gone through a series of step downs from thoughts to emotions or emotions to thoughts and slowly but surely crystallizes into your physiological body or into your matrix, your hologram around you. You command the field. And if you are working at a state, an emotional state that's locked into a vagal response of fight or flight, that is what you will be commanding every cell in your body, every bacteria, and every vibrational frequency in the field around us. So in its essence, when we're trying to make contact with the field, we have to be able to hack a theta brainwave space. And that is done through mastery of the emotions and the mental stories. But first of all, we're sitting with all this trapped energy, which is just seeking some kind of rest and some kind of release. So um, I think you can bring us up to date with the physics. <laughs> well, yeah, that's great. And I'm good. So many people have talked about dealing with complicated, difficult or painful emotions and memories as a process of collapsing them. And that's such a useful language because basically the various issues that we have in mind uh, sometimes are like in go in many directions and to sort of suddenly see them all come together into one place where they can be sorted is psychologically a process of collapse. It's right. And uh, the thing that's beautiful is that the psychological work it takes to do that is identical with the electrical field that helps, which is basically perfected charge collapse. I mean, Einstein talked about, you know, his theory of gravity as perfected charge collapse many times. And we now know that's related to what's called phase conjugation or fractal field. Basically, you make the shape of a broad spectrum phase conjugation between the two plasma fields uh, from all the way from optical conjugation down to magnetic and low frequency uh, as uh, pine cones kissing noses, enabling implosive charge collapse. So it's beautiful that we see the psychological work as perfectly parallel to the physics. And also that you, as you bring up the theta wave activation, you know, we've been talking a lot about um, the Flame and Mind brainwave app. Uh, we did a beautiful film yesterday. And the major turning point there also is when, after the alpha gets coherent, the lower frequency, theta, like about two to seven hertz or something, um, that when the lower frequencies get coherence in your brain waves, which is often called theta healing, and so few people measure that, but it is beautifully measurable. And what that access to the longer wave in the brain waves means is that collapse is completing itself and charge distribution is becoming efficient, implosive. We even we'll talk more later, but it's becoming longitudinal, which is able to propagate like in a fractal field. And the longitudinal wave is the way out of the center for implosive collapse, where the transverse becomes longitudinal, the ba from the ka, so to speak. And that's exactly fits the metaphor you speak of, which is, you know, a, a place where the stuck charge can be distributed and the memories can, as it were, enter the collective and uh, the DNA uh, library of survival. <laughs> so when you see the, everything from the big picture, collapse implosion is perfect. And that's beautiful. 
So um, it, it fits the physics we've been talking about for a long time nicely, and you have a lovely psychological language to talk about that. So as we were processing that yesterday, you began to talk about uh, your work with young people and how you were helping. I think it was a young boy who had a fear. In this case, I think it was fear of darkness, maybe it was. And But you talked particularly about using a breathing technique, which I think we can also rate to coll collapse. But do you want to talk to your about how you used a breathing technique with Therify also then? So the process involves um, magnetizing the fear or the anger or the emotion, which is a very scary thing to do when you're dealing with deep traumas. So you start with little smaller charges of energy to teach them how to work with, in essence, their charges of plasma that have been trapped. So I speak to them in a terminology that's very much involved in technology and gaming, and they can refer to it. They understand it. They understand very easily about portals and the physics, the basics of physics release, releasing charges. So I'll explain it to them in that sense. And then we'll go in and address a smaller charge, say, for instance, fear of the dark. So we can't really address the deeper traumas yet, but we can start to go to places that before we are trained to repulse. So the whole mind control of aversion or separation um, is about repulsing it and pretending you're happy or pretending you're still or pretending you're peaceful and putting this in a nice, safe little place to ferment into some other kind of entity or thought form or being or disease or whatever. So. With children, it's so much easier because they go there so quickly and they don't want to be in fear. Their natural nature is not in fear, it's in love. So the way into heaven is as the little children because love, theta, those are all the natural inclinations of a human being until the age of between 11 and 14 when the traumas start to almost calcify in, into their personality and their ego uh, with trapped energy. So if we can get them in a softer space, we've got them before they've identified those stories as part of themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so the fear of the dark, sorry. Well, and, and so then you integrated a specific way of breathing, if I remember as well, then, did you? Yes. So the fear of the dark, to intensify it, we can sit into that access of the subconscious, that's the dark. Um, so in, initially it's that comfort in that, in that death space or the deep breathing space. And in order to collapse the fight or flight and the fear response, the breathing, the fire breath, creates an additional charge, an additional tension. So bringing in that oxygen heats up the body. Uh, the heat then generates the blood flow. The blood flow then takes the oxygen to the extremities and immediately is another way of hacking a theta brainwave space very quickly. But what we do is instead of leaving them to just sit on the therapy and, you know, focus or not focus properly, I take them into a very steady focus with the breath on the fear of, of the dark. So it's a fire breath where I teach them how to pump the air with their stomach to ensure that the lungs are being drawn down as they breathe in and the stomach pushes out and the stomach pulls in and the air is then pushed out from the bottom of the lungs to ensure as much release detoxification as possible. So it creates a space for movement of energy and heat. Then, sorry? No, go, well, go ahead. Uh, so th yes. does that it say that really helps them get through the peak pressure of the fear in some way, perhaps? Yes, and all it takes, like it's giving them something else to focus on. So their, their attention is on breathing. And then I say, magnify the fear. Magn you're scared of the dark. Think of all the scary things in there that could jump out of the cupboard or under your bed or you know what are the things no light let's go there and they they focus and they breathe and then the breathing takes them into that space of almost fear but excitement and fear are the same chemistry and um, once you start to use that peak state that focus point that focal point with your intention of going into that space the body is now in a chemical state where it's adrenaline, it's 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 on, it's awake, and that's able, able able to sort perhaps in a certain way. Um, yes. And and we talked yesterday uh, again in terms of the physical chemistry that 
uh, the deep breathing bringing oxygen and blood flow uh, increases metabolic rate and therefore charge density and therefore more fire in the plasma. Literally, the, the light inside the body is lit. Fire breath, it's that fast breath that creates a heat and then a deep breath in and then hold it. And I tell them, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And that uh, kicks into a mitochondrial resuscitate. So the cell breathes, it, it releases all its carbon dioxide and then breathes. And all that oxygen is absorbed into the mitochondria and into the cell. And that then enables always the catalyst, that energetic, like when you go into the therify, where that, that um, huge amount of energy that then releases that trapped memory. Mm -hmm. So then, yeah. and holding that in the field, it's really difficult, I'm sure people are aware of this, but <laughs> it's very difficult to hold on to an issue when you're in the field because there's a strong magnetic presence that wipes those stories clear. So exactly. if it's a non-information field, as you say, and you'll come up with the right terminology, in the state of pure intent, with, with, in the face of pure intent, it collapses immediately. Mm -hmm. So, so why, when our intention to heal is and 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 the and the behavioral pattern or the characteristic or the charge that is inhibiting our healing is looked at it's a no-brainer i want healing i don't want to keep the charge <laughs> and at the same time we're wiping the slate and, and that so it's beautiful the way you then climax the fire breath with a still point and uh, indeed it is the still point then where all the charge collapse implodes and therefore sorts perfectly as it were and the more charge the better at that point because the implosion will then be <laughs> brighter as it were and the pine cones kiss noses more accurately and as you say the theta the long wave becomes available in the still point which is reaching into the deep unconscious and we know that uh, even carlos and our barcelona group have shown that therify has been dramatically helpful in getting people to deeper uh, access to trauma memories uh, in psychoanalysis. Uh, but it, no one has really talked before about using breath so consciously with the therapy. I, I really appreciate your pioneering work in that regard. It makes total sense. And it, actually, um, I'm also reminded quite uh, intensively of my work. I used to teach at uh, rebirthing centers. Uh, and uh, in rebirthing, they often do deep breathing to the point of what's called tetany, which is almost your muscle spasm because you've you deep breathed so long, which I don't think is necessary here. But the point is that um, rebirthing is similar in this sense, that you're imitating the point of max pressure of the birth canal in order to bring memory through birth, actually. And uh, obviously, if you graph the pressure change over time of the perfect birth canal, we now know that it's a golden ratio curve like the centic waveform for love, which is why a regular birth is critical uh, better than a cesarean, because that is literally the bond of power, the title of the book, and why Caesar made war on the Druids, basically, because he couldn't feel, because he couldn't bond, because he didn't get that phase lock of that moment of maximum pressure. Interestingly, um, he couldn't bond with his mother, he couldn't bond with his village, and therefore ultimately could not bond with the land because he hadn't gone through the place of pressure which establishes the phase discipline which defines all bonding. That's Joseph Chilton's Purse's famous book, Bond of Power, which uh, we knew him quite well. He's a wonderful guy. So um, the rebirthing people use various techniques to increase the concrescence of pressures at that moment. They uh, lie on the belly of a surrogate mother, they use placental extract and they do deep breathing and sometimes they do underwater, all of which is designed to create the memory of max convergence of pressures. And if you can get go through the center of maximum pressure, <laughs> then you can emerge sorted. <laughs> That's more than metaphor here. And, and your description is a beautiful psychological story. Go ahead. Order out of chaos. So exactly. this then brings all of the alchemical and the hermetic principles and you know you almost bring two to one and create that portal where you bring the two hemispheres to overlap and create your Vesica Pisces and through that is where the gamma wave can sort of birth into creation and if we are intending it um, and and then guiding that life with pure life with with absolute consciousness then we are giving birth before the angels that is the going to the inner sanctum and, and giving proper creative birth. Yes, so there's all kinds of spiritual dimensions, obviously, to this 
uh, breath cascade and and the fire breath actually uh, Valerie here often talks about the fire breath in her work with yoga as well and fire is a pretty good metaphor for the plasma achieving peak so detoxifying what well, yeah, yes it's detoxifying the tissues that's what we are told and also alkalinizing the body yes that's great yes mm -hmm. alkalinizing yes makes so you can uh, do uh, intense yoga and not feeling uh, tired or you go beyond your limits because of this fire breath that really allows it yes yes and then you do need to breathe for a while <laughs> it's like breathing inside yourself like we have been trained with a lady who does uh, d deep diving and we could sustain i was able to sustain three or four minutes without breathing it was amazing and, and that's great because that that still point uh, by extending the duration of that still point possible after a deep breath uh, longer and longer waves can embed and conjugate and implode and be sorted it's, the yeah. still point is beautiful and actually so often we say that it's it's the still point after the therapy session wherein magic happens and people cry and good things happen too <laughs> And it's, and it's so much more powerful when you actually intend that and, and are brave enough to go into the scary space that you've been taught to repel. So everything in us tells us to move away from pain. But the space that we create within the plasma field is an, a sacred space where we can go to the pain and breathe into it with the intention of releasing it. And then every aspect of us, every you know, fractal part of us, every discordance, re disresonance, um, um, ca character traits or behavioral pattern or personality can come and integrate. Cognitive uh, dis becomes cognitive resonance. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Very, very well said. Yes. Uh, it, it, sometimes we sing the song, Haven't Got Time for the Pain, <laughs> which which is actually about, you know, the time is the, the space in which to rotate to center. So uh, absolutely, uh, taking time for the pain means instead of avoiding it, as you say, going through it. And every psychologist knows that you breathe into the pain and you focus on it, and that's how you go through it. And what we're saying here now is specific breath technique in conjunction with the specific implosive plasma of Therify are additional tools to help you do exactly what every psychologist has long known is that you have to go through the pain and not avoid it as it were to the center which is and it could be fear of anything or pain of anything but it, once you achieve that implosion it is sorted and and from there only the shareable wave survives which is phase conjugation emerging from uh, into fractality as it were perfected distribution which is all about the spiritual so these metaphors fit together fun and we've been talking about them a long time and Kate brings a lovely fresh new angle which is super and uh, so then uh, maybe lastly here depending on what you would like to talk about but the other thing you chatted about in your group session yesterday was about new techniques for doing some remote healing with Therify and maybe uh, before I ask you to share a bit about what you did uh, just a, a bit about the science on that this is background here now um, many people have had many stories about successful remote healing with Therify. And I apologize that we haven't been more systematic in gathering those stories. It's more difficult to do that science because obviously uh, there's so many variables. However, we actually believe, unlike Einstein, we understand the physics of action at a distance. Einstein called it spooky. We now know yeah. precisely. <laughs> Yeah, but um, we now know precisely that we've talked at length that if, if, as the pine cone shaped charge field between the plasma cones called phase conjugation, that the transverse electromagnetic enters the pine cone going up and down, and by going down the perfect spiral on the perfect cone, emerges going as a compressional wave called longitudinal EMF, which uh, is known to be move faster than light and uh, enable action at a distance. And we also then know how it enables action at a distance, and this is half of Tom Bearden's life work, the Russian woodpecker and all these things, that um, when the longitudinal waves, which can go through just about anything, and they do go faster than light, um, when they then cross again perpendicularly at a distance, they make another vortex pine cone, where then the longitudinal resynthesizes the transverse component, which is heat containing, which solves the problem of heat containment, the holy grail for all fusion research on planet Earth, and um, enables action at a distance, which is what Einstein didn't understand because he didn't understand longitudinal waves. So, all that science aside, if we're right, and I strongly believe we are, 
uh, we believe there are some very specific things you can do to help the remote processes work. For example, we know that telepathy is enabled at magnetic line crosses of the Earth as the cozy rev mirror work because they're placed at magnetic crosses, which embed longitudinal oh, DNA radio. Song lines, song. Uh, yes, thank you, Valerie. This, the song lines of the Aboriginal. Exactly. So um, this means and that you can't really start a labyrinth, a cathedral, or the best place to put a therifier, the best place for birth or death. These are all uh, places where magnetic lines cross and create this embedding and this sort of DNA radio launch. So the placement of both the sender and the receiver can help this. And also we know um, why Agni Hotra works so much better at sunrise and sunset precisely because that exact, which you know you can heal whole areas, bioregions create fertility with Agni Hotra, which is just plasma, implosive plasma. And the reason it works at sunrise and sunset precisely is because those right angles are called phase conjugate or four wave. Talking about how the, the science of remote healing helps us understand how it works and even helps us do it, do it better by creating that alignment that makes connections. And now we want to work with Kate here to talk about the psychology and the practice of doing remote healing, particularly about using a surrogate. So you want to tell us a little bit about your experience there, Kate? Go ahead. So, Dan, um, when I'm working with um, children, sometimes you can't get them to sit still. Um, and in when you're training animals or when you're working with animals, it's very important to be in the space of the theta, the brainwave state. Um, in order to be able to access the field around us. So in my experience, which is very limited with the Therify, um, it, it has taught me, the field has taught me, um, consciousness has taught me, and every time I've charged up my chi levels, my consciousness levels, the, I'm able to comprehend more consciousness. And as it's happened, my reticular activating system is now like an antennae that is able to emit and receive a 360 degree uh, radius information space. And in my experience, I've made contact with Andromeda. So I've opened up a portal and tested how far the Heart Math Institute gave me some figures. And my subconscious doesn't trust anything unless I can do it. So that's why I've pushed the veil. Um, and within that collapse, I had to collapse certain limitations that had been placed upon me in the morphic resonance. One of them was Lucifer and the understanding of good and evil. Um, I had to collapse the whole story of Lil Lilith and the Queen of Heaven, Sophia, and internalize the mythology. Um, as you so, I love your, your one line saying, you know, if people would spend more than, you know, 2,000, I don't know how many you, you said years or on mythology and 10 minutes on physics, you know, if our children were learning this and how to internalize energy, we would be so much more powerful. So in my journey of internalizing it, I tested the limits. I had an experience of opening up portals and seeing interdimensionally and into, into galaxies. And I began to understand the aspect of there being black holes at the center of every atom. Um, Nassim, Nassim Haramein, Haramein talks about it. Um, and the interwoven connection between interdimensional, uh, the connection between inter, in, well, interdimensional connection due to the implosion of the black holes. So that was what got me thinking and working with this charge that I was now receiving from the therapy. So first of all, I started charging myself up and then going to release it into my clients or release it into the children or working with that energy and working with the, the, the just the counseling and the psychology that I did, but bringing a huge charge to the space that we created. Um, so that was without the working with the plasma charge. And then I started working on much, a, a sort of much greater field, um, working within the dynamics of the field around me if I internalize the aspects that I'm trying, that I'm working for, or um, sending healing, or standing surrogate for, as long as my will is aligned with the most high will of the individual that I'm working with, it will, it will reach in a quarter of a second 
anywhere within our galaxy. Um, if I'm coming from an agenda that is lower than that purest intent, it is less likely to make it through. No matter how much I think my intention is pure, if I have hidden agendas and I'm based in fear and I don't want to lose that to an outcome, it minimizes the intensity, I think is the word, that I work with. But if my, my if I'm of absolute service to other, and, and in my case, I'm a bridge to the children and I dedicate my life to that, as long as that is my intention, raised or no amount of trauma that can't be overcome and it can happen here or it can happen anywhere in the world and it's that knowing that understanding that gnostic understanding of the power that we have and are working with that's inviting the field to communicate with me and my deep desire to work with it so those are the keys to be able to, to being able to imprint the field rather than having the field imprint you. So the morphic resonance has has got these artificial structures that have cubed our golden apple or our golden mean, and has created little pixels in my understanding. And when we restore natural order, we return to the most high will of the golden mean, which means the purest intent for life. And it will restore the pattern of life, order out of chaos, like you said. Well, we, in, it is true, of course, the, the golden ratio conjugation creates uh, implosion, which is a wormhole, quite literally, in the longitudinal wave is, is a way to, you can call it a portal. And in fact, you can see through that wormhole if you're an advanced shaman, it's beautiful. Uh, a lot of scientists aren't quite ready for that conversation, but it actually does make some physics work. And we have many friends who've talked about communicating with Andromeda, for example. So, but let's, just in a practical sense here, then, if you had someone that's at a distance that you want to help, what have your practical steps that then be? Do you, you, you yourself- First of all, they have to ask for help. First of all, they have to give permission. If there is okay. no clear communication and, and the person that you're working with needs to have a clear intention of what they want to achieve. So there, there must be a united intention. So the healer who is neutral, and that's the gift of an externalized, not family member, not friend healer, because their agenda is completely neutral and they aren't polarized by any emotional content. So in, in a shamanic understanding, that witness um, with that authority and that understanding of the exercise of healing um, at a distance or remote viewing or lucid dreaming, all of those require a very strong intention and a very strong belief or faith in what you are doing. So as you say, mainstream science is not ready for that conversation yet. You have to have pure desire and pure intent to create a wormhole, to time travel. And first of all, you learn that when you time travel or space travel, you, um, your intent gets you there. That's the focal point that will open up the space, the vortex. And it doesn't matter whether it's time or space, that intention will get you there in a quarter of a second. And the intensity of the healing and the intention and the united um, resonance of the two that are gathering, or many that are gathering, and obviously it becomes more powerful when there are many, will change the state of the field. So when my perception is in separation and warfare, I add that frequency to the field. However, when I'm holding a state of knowing unity and coming from a law of one where we're both sides of the same coin, we depolarize, we come out of a polarized state, which will then stop that axis from swinging off kilter and then brings us to our zero point seeking. And that's when we can truly neutrally hold space. Again, it's, it's time space is neither here nor there in that world. Well, in, in conjugation is where the ways agree. It, it does make sense uh, but it, it, and, and beautiful, but let's try to be as practical as we can here. So you're describing who can be the witness or surrogate, right? And, and what they need to do, that specific. Yes. And, Anybody that's coming from a higher space or a space of holding or a space of love. I see. And but would they then actually visualize the person they were trying to communicate with and it's get inside? Be 
pictures, absolutely. So once you've guided that intention, you create a picture out of that. Your subconscious works in pictures, not in words. Words are spells and letters, and those are what confuse us. So we go back to either a light letter language, which we have either learned from a sacred, a sacred um, spiritual truth, or one that we have created that our subconscious has interacted with us, um, which is like Reiki or any of those uh, practices. But the Aboriginals, all their art was very much a means of bringing about resonance, the music of the spheres, the harmonics. And you mm. restore that magnetic field and that intention, that's what you get. So bringing it and, back. And it's beautiful. But, and, and so you have uh, some pretty good experiences, examples of success doing this remotely. As Absolutely. It were. Absolutely. Yeah. Every single one of them. And it's, it has to be consent. Um, and it has to be, it has to be, the, the field will wake me up at three o'clock in the morning and I will process and work with each one of them. So if they've given me permission, my time in the morning is working energetically within the field. I'm witnessing and working at, at a remote distance. Um, and I will get impressions and I will get senses. I will understand that the emotional content that I'm working with isn't mine. So it can get very confusing for the person holding space because you can pick up other energy. And then if you're not separating and if you're not neutral and coming from a meditative space, you can actually take it personally and think that it's yours. That's what most empaths are doing. So what the Therify does is gives me an opportunity to charge my field, clear my own stuff, collapse any stories that I'm working with, and then take in as many um, other fields as the field is presenting. So that means if I'm talking to an audience or if I'm doing a one-on-one -on -one or if I'm talking to a child, the field does the work. I've just got to transmit the message. Um, the same thing goes the other way around. They transmit the message of healing, and my job is to create a charge and support by witnessing with the same intent the collapse of whatever is binding. Mm -hmm. Which, and it is amazing, uh, Valerie here and our other friends in California said that the receiver in most cases is very aware that something is happening and mm -hmm. have, it's very specific, they feel a definite presence. Thank and you. so it's great to hear that you've had success with that and we'd love to have more stories about that. I'm sure you'll eventually share some write-ups here and we'll have some reports. It's beautiful. Thank you. Super. And, and I, I remind everyone that the first recording we did with Kate Forbes here from South Africa was about her work uh, working with traumatized children and bringing them through trauma with Therify and also using that in conjunction with her work with the gut microbiome and treating the charge field of the guts recharged with the right microbes almost shamanically and recognizing who is there and who to talk to. So it, I encourage everyone to look at the other recording as well. It's related to this conversation. And um, uh, Kate, I know that um, when we talked about the breathing techniques a bit here earlier, you said there was some more you wanted to say about that, wasn't there? About the Just steps in the breathing. Just part of it, one cycle. And I found within the three minutes mark that I can keep a child on the Therify comfortably, three minutes is great. So I do three cycles, three cycles of breathing within that three minutes. If I'm dealing with somebody who can handle nine minutes, it'll be three cycles of three minutes each. So I break them up accordingly. If it's six minutes, I'll break it up into two minutes. So obviously with a child, the amount of fire breaths you can do, um, you breathe until the person feels a little bit dizzy and there's a lot of oxygen going through their brain. That's when you're going to flood, as Valerie says, flood the system with oxygen, which is also, incidentally, the most powerful um, antiseptic and antibacterial there is to help yeah. balance microbes. So, right. again, when you're looking upon the spell or the thing that's been binding you, um, if you look upon a bacteria and you, it's a virus or if it's underneath your perception, uh, as in it's got you under a grip of mind control, then if I tell you to give up your sugar, you're going to tell me to go and jump in the lake because that, that bacteria that is in dominion or has possession of you knows that it wants sugar. So it does take that pure intent and that will to overcome that craving to get to a point of stillness that you can decide, okay, I would rather have fruit sugar and vegetable sugar and choose different sugars than, than a white sugar. It's the same um, 
so 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 with the child we we if you're breathing into a craving or if you're breathing into the fear of the dark the first time around you're going to get a very intense charge and in EFT you would give it a number so let's say it's, I got it to 10 out of 10 the first the first cycle they relax they let out their breath and they just drop into it their bodies the second cycle I say to them now find that charge again and let's go now they're not they're going to get to maybe maybe between four and seven being able to access that charge oftentimes with a child that's gone after one cycle then they can just drop into a theta and relax um, but so let's, let's say we go through a second cycle they hold that charge that fear of the dark the absolute fear and you must remember that when you go into one fear you're going to release a whole lot of other charges that are based around that where it came from the memories the smells so the second round is really to really wipe the magnetic slate clear by the time the second round has ended you'll find it's down to a zero or a maybe a one or a two and then we have permission to imprint the picture of the healthy symbiotic whole being and I would obviously frame this before they go into the therapy so if it is scared of the dark then that fire that they've created inside becomes almost like a candle in the darkness and they get an image of themselves being the light in the darkness or um, what would it be like for them to be still and relaxed and, and, and enjoying snuggling in their blankets. So I give them another picture or they find another picture that they're willing to attach to and that can then imprint and start to command the subconscious with a new command. And that's just three minutes. Then they're going to go home and there will be an explosion of some sort. It might be tears, it might be a night of terror in the, in the dark or whatever. They'll come up against that dragon, that sleeping dragon, because they've been keeping it, trying to pretend they're not scared. So now they get to express it and that voice is released. And that might happen once or twice, but the first time will be the biggest and the second time will be a lesser. And by the third time, they understand that this was just a record in their head this was just a program, a virus, and they can now be the light in the darkness or learn to command their chemistry, learn to pull down that anxiety. And then we can start going, OK, now let's go into deeper traumas because now you've learned how to handle a baseline fear. Let's go into activating. And by the time we've dropped through everything, we have a whole healed being who knows how to collapse an unwanted condition and create a new one and how to do the rehypnotizing or neural neuro neuro uh, reset that needs to happen in order to take that trapped energy away from those that neuro, those neurological pathways it's it's so amazing that you've thought about these things in such detail Kate and you obviously speak from experience it's very helpful we're grateful so what you're saying in other words is that on the third breath after you sort of process the pain is you get a clear picture of the positive outcome as it were so that's what you leave it with is that clear picture of the positive resolution as it were and that's what you imprint as you're saying yes and that will generally be the deepest desire but because we've hidden that fear away the fear is stronger the overriding emotion is going to win so even though I have this good intention to get up every day and not be scared of the dark or not be not eat that thing this the fear is going to win so I'm always going to my actions will always be based in fear until I actively go into the fear, release that charge and reprogram a new state. And then it can be the same conditions and circumstances. My intention is based in love and no longer in fear. There's just a difference. And, and it's beautiful. Remember, all of this is basically in the context of what is called sacred space, which is just charge implosion, and the Therify is one of other tools to do that. But the point is to understand the principles that when this lots of pressure waves of charge can converge at one point and become centripetal, implosive, perfecting that collapse, from there we can do this work to sort. And using the breath and the surrogate technique and then the sequence of visualizations, and Claire has given that 
wonderful structure for us here and we thank you claire if there's anything else you want to say now great also hopefully in the future you'll be sharing some of this and we'll have some summaries and write up and we'll do more work on therified techniques but we can't thank you enough kate was there anything else you wanted to say now we're, we're yeah, just, and i just you. wanted to say yeah. that with that result i've helped um children that have been traumatized molested uh come from a, a, abused and battered homes um, just using the diet, the seven laws of life, using the change in and collapse process, within three sessions, I've had them from not being able to express themselves or not speaking to sk skipping, dancing, happy, and expressing just their natural process again. So returning to the golden mean, the plasma field, working within it, it's just, I can't thank you enough for bringing us this technology and for, you know, putting the dots together. All that you bring is just, what we need to teach the children. So I promise you that I will teach my children physics properly. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, we had some insights about the physics, but you had the courage to actually take it to the children and do the work and we thank you. And we're glad you have people like uh, Rebecca working with you there Thanks. and Valerie here. So thank you and blessings to everyone. There will be more to come in the Therify Technique series. Uh, you're talking to Kate Forbes, uh, from South Africa. Kate, you want to give them your website again just so they... It's purelife.org.za purelife.org.za for Kate, of course. And here we have therify.net. I'm Dan Winter. We're signing off. We hope to see you all again soon. Thank you for joining us on Therify Techniques. Thanks. Blessings. Bye. Bye-bye. Okay.